What's up guys, so in today's video I'm going to give you some of my best tips for growing your biceps. And then after that I'm going to cook up some low calorie pizzas that you can easily fit into your macros. What's up guys, welcome to today's video. We're back downstairs in the apartment gym. I'm going through a pull workout right now, but I'm about to take you guys through some of my bicep exercises and give you guys some tips to optimize your bicep training. So let me start off by showing you guys a little bit of the anatomy of the bicep. So you're gonna have the, excuse me if I pronounce these wrong, but the brachialis muscle right here, that's gonna be the, the long head of your bicep on the outside and then you're gonna have the brachii right here that's gonna be the inside of your bicep or the also known as the short head so uh, when training biceps a lot of people tend to put a lot of their focus on the short head of the bicep but you want to make sure that you're training both of them because they're both equally as important and uh, another thing about biceps, but the uh, bicep serves for three major functions. So that's going to be um, elbow flex flexion, or like curling movement. It's going to be for forearm supination, so rotating your wrist like this. And then shoulder flexion, so raising your arm up. So there's going to be the three ma major functions, the short head and the long head are both helping out with those functions. So I'm gonna start off with some bar, uh, barbell curls. All right, so when lifting the biceps, you wanna really focus on mind-muscle connection, and you wanna make sure that you're working out your biceps and not your other muscles. So, you know, we're not, we're not using our back, we're not using our shoulders. You just wanna, uh, you wanna make sure that you're uh, getting a tight contraction and you're um, controlling the weight. So, you wanna control it down. No swinging like this, because that's you're using your back and your shoulders. You don't want that. So, when training biceps, first thing you you want to do is you want to check your ego. Leave your ego at the door, because you'll see people come in here. They're uh, they're gonna be barbell. They're gonna put two plates on. They're gonna be curling 135 using their back, like I was just showing you guys. So, I'm not saying go light. You want to use the most amount of weight that you can control. So, I'm not saying go light, just use, don't go too heavy where you're throwing off your form and you're not actually working the bicep, so. All right, so I know some people do cheat reps when they're doing bicep curls, especially with the barbell. I don't really like doing those, but I am a fan of forced reps sometimes, so um, when, you, when I get to, a, when I start to fail, you have a, a lifting partner, if you have one, he's gonna, uh, he's gonna lift the weight up basically for you. That's Jeff, thank you. Um, he's gonna uh, lift the weight up for you on the, concentric uh, movement of the lift, so the, the part where you're contracting, then he's gonna let go and let me control the weight down, also known as the negative part portion of the lift. Then he's gonna help me lift it up again and let go and let me do the negative. So that's called, so called a force rep, so I'll show you an example really quickly. So just let me lift it up and then let go, ready? I'm gonna let go. I'm gonna control the weight down on the negative. It's gonna help me back up, control the weight down. One more. And then it's gonna let go. I'm gonna let that. So sometimes I'll do a heavy set and I'll go to failure, do five or six reps, and then I'll have my lifting partner help me help me do that, so I can uh, get a few more reps in with the uh, negative part of the lift. So now we're gonna move on to uh, standing dumbbell bicep curls. So the next exercise that I'm gonna do is a alternating dumbbell bicep curl, and I'm gonna do them standing. You can do them seated as well, but I prefer to do them standing. So this exercise, um, we're gonna have the dumbbells at our sides with this kind of grip here to start. And we're gonna come up and we're gonna start to rotate. So we're gonna get that supinated rotation going. So supinated is when your palm is facing the ceiling. And then we're gonna rotate back down when we come down. So we're getting that elbow flexion as well. And this is really important that you get this full twist. So I like to think, I like to squeeze like with my pinky, and I like to like think that I'm bringing my pinky right up to my shoulder up here. So I'm just gonna do alternating like 
stand up. Making sure that you're getting the full rotation. And another thing I see done wrong with this, some people will do curls and they won't, they won't focus on the uh, negative portion of the uh, exercise. They just they, they lift it up and they let it fall. They lift it up and they just let it fall. But you gotta control the weight all the way through the motion. So up, full rotation, and control it down. It's like this. And this is really gonna hit that short head of the bicep. Here I like to work in like the six to 10 rep range, usually about eight. And it's important to make sure you guys are training with intensity. When I say six to 10, you make sure you're training hard. You wanna be failing or having one rep left in the tank at like six to 10. If you do eight, you could have done 12, you're really not training in the six to 10 rep range. So six to 10, usually I hit, I hit about, I try to fall in that range with this lift, so. And another tip on this lift, if you, uh, you, if you wanna make it a little bit more challenging, put your grip up towards the top of the dumbbell just like this. So when you uh, start to twist the dumbbell, it, it's gonna be harder for you to get that full rotation going because there's more weight on this inside. It's, it's, forcing, it's forcing my hand to want to go back into this neutral grip here. So maybe lower the weight down a little bit if you need to, but you put hold on the top of the dumbbell and still trying to bring that pinky to the shoulder and controlling the weight on the way down as well. All right, so next we'll move on to the next exercise. So here's another variation of the bicep curl that can be done. It's done on the cables, and it's kind of with your shoulder behind you a little bit, and just curling like this, it's keeping tension on the bicep the entire, for the entire movement. So sometimes I'll change it up, and you don't really have to go very heavy on this particular exercise. So sometimes I'll throw these into my workout. I'll do, I'll do single arm. These I like to do about eight to 10 reps per set. So that, that's just another variation that you can do. All right, next exercise is gonna be a single arm dumbbell preacher curl. We don't have a preacher curl machine or bar in this, um, in this gym down here, so I'm just using a dumbbell and using this bench and then be leaning over it like this. And this is a good exercise to really put a lot of tension on the short head. So I'm just gonna go all the way down. I'm just gonna really squeeze up all the way. Control it on the, on the negative part. Squeeze all the way up. And the bicep's gonna be most activated. You wanna go all the way down. The bicep's gonna be most activated in this like first third of this lift right here. And then it kind of trails off a little bit as you come here. It's really going to target the short head of the bicep as well. So, six to ten reps with each arm. I'll do, do my left, then I'll do my right. Make sure you're just getting a tight contraction. Focus on really squeezing. All right, so then now we're going to move on to an exercise that's gonna target the long end of the bicep. All right, so the next exercise is gonna be a seated incline uh, dumbbell curl. And I like to do these alternating as well. And this is really gonna target the long head of the bicep because it's already fully stretched out and your sh shoulder's kind of behind you like this. So this is really gonna hit the long head and it's gonna, it, the, the second half of the mo movement, gonna, there's gonna be the most tension on the, on the bicep. So it's just gonna look like this. Same as when we were, uh, doing standing curls, but uh, we're gonna rotate the wrist and bring the pinky up to the shoulder. And you can play around with different uh, inclines on this. It just make sure it's comfortable. You, if you don't wanna be too far back and it, um, uh, your shoulders to be uncomfortable, this is a good incline for me. Some people prefer it to be more like a 30 degree angle. I like it to be closer to 45, 60 even. And so, 
Same thing, you just wanna rotate the wrist, get a tight squeeze, bring the pinky up to the shoulder, and then control the weight on the way down. All right, so the next exercise is gonna be a hammer curl. I'm gonna show you a few ways to do it. That's gonna really hit the, uh, the long head of the bicep, also with this brachialis uh, radius or whatever, however you say it, right here. So, first thing is pick up some dumbbells. Just gonna have it at your side, keep the grip just neutral like this, and I'm just gonna do alternating. So, sit up there, tight squeeze. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm gonna get my knees for this. All right, so tight squeeze. Control it slow on the way down. Tight squeeze. Control it up slow on the way down. So there's one way to do it with the dumbbells. I like doing it with the dumbbells, and I also like doing it, I like doing it on the cables with a rope actually. You grab the rope and you do them both at the same time. We don't have a rope here though, so I'm just gonna show you how to do how I do a single arm. And I don't even have an attachment on the thing, I just grab, grab the thing like this. And same thing, just keep the keep that neutral hammer grip. You're just gonna squeeze up, control on the way down. Squeeze up. And you, I do both arms, so like I said, when I'm down here, I'll do it on the cable like that a lot. But when I'm at my regular gym, I prefer to, I usually like to do the, uh, the ropes on the cable, double at the same time, but sometimes I'll do dumbbells as well. You can switch it up, there's a whole, different, a whole lot of different variations, so it's a good thing to switch it up from time to time. So, on to the next lift. All right, so we're gonna hit one more exercise for bicep, and it's gonna be, the only one we do with a pronated grip. So pronated grips when the uh, palm is facing down towards the ground. And so we're gonna do we're gonna do reverse bicep curl on the cable. So that's gonna really hit this muscle right here. That's uh, coming down along the forearm, up into the arm, and that's called the brachioradialis. I think that's how you say it. So we're gonna go do that. The exercise right now. I'll show you guys how it's done. It's just like that. Tight squeeze coming up, slow down. It's really gonna hit that muscle. I do each arm, like eight to 12 reps on this. And then that's, that's all I do for for that, uh, for the pronated grip exercise. Almost done. All right, so that's gonna conclude my bicep workout for today. Uh, guys, those aren't the only bicep exercises that I do. That was just an example of what I chose to do today. And uh, I, there's a lot of different variations that you can do. And I do recommend that you change it up from time to time. Uh, I just wanna show you guys some of the major ones that I do a lot of the time and give you guys some tips on that. Um, so to recap it, uh, you don't need to go that heavy on biceps. Sometimes you'll see people going too heavy and throwing off their form. They'll be recruiting other muscles like their back and their shoulders, and you don't want to do that. But that's not to get confused. I'm not saying to go too light. You just want to use as much weight as you can where you can still control it and get a good contraction, control the weight on the eccentric motion, and uh, make sure you're getting a full range of motion. So uh, that's, those are my tips on biceps and how to grow them. Uh, I'm gonna finish up with some cardio, then I'm gonna go upstairs, stick around if you want to see me uh, cook up some uh, low carb pizzas. I'll see you in the kitchen. Alright, we're back upstairs from the uh, gym down the kitchen. I'm gonna cook up some healthy low, okay, gonna <laughs> cook up some healthy low fat low carb pizzas for me and Jeff watching the Tribe game. So let me show you guys really quick what we got here. Jeff's probably gonna think it's gross, but he's gonna be surprised. So we got this. Um, this garlic flatbread, macros on it are pretty good. Five grams of fat, Two macros. 29 carbs, six protein. Then we got this even um, lighter option, this um, flat out flatbread, light Italian herb, um, 1.5 grams of fat, only 14 carbs, and nine grams of protein. Then we got some of this fat free mozzarella cheese game changer right here um, we got zero fat obviously zero fat is not okay two carbs and nine protein um, 
I got some of this grilled and ready chicken. Um, so that's going to be a little bit of fat for three ounces, two and a half grams of fat, one carb, 19 protein. Got these turkey pepperonis. So for 17 slices, which is kind of a lot, it's only four grams of fat, zero carbs, nine protein. Um, some reduced fat Parmesan cheese. I probably won't have any of that. Jeff might want some. Uh, this Hunt sauce, tomato sauce. So that's only, so it's zero fat, four carbs, and less than a gram of protein. It's for 62 grams though, which is quite a bit. And I got some of this red pepper and Cajun. So I'm gonna put those together, put them in the oven, and I'll show you guys what they look like. All right guys, just pulled these out of the oven. Looking pretty good. Let me give you the macros on these, so. Start with the one on the left. It's uh, this one with this garlic flatbread. The macros on that one are 431 calories, 45 protein, 35, 39 carbs, and 10 fat, so not too bad. Then this one's gonna be even less. That one is this one on the right here. And that one is going to be 48 grams of protein, only 24 carbs, and only six fats. So as you can see, two pizzas right there. Pretty low in calories, low in carbs, low in fats. So I mean, even, even if you want to add some of this stuff, you can, like there's room for this reduced fat Parmesan. We only got one gram of fat, two carbs, one protein. So if you want to sprinkle a little bit on there, uh, no calories in this crushed red pepper, it's just some Cajun. If you like, if you like a uh, barbecue chicken pizza, this uh, Stubbs original barbecue sauce actually has pretty good macros for 32 grams, which is a pretty good uh, serving for barbecue sauce. You're only getting six grams of carbs, so that's not bad at all if you want to uh, have a barbecue chicken pizza. So that's our meal. We're going to eat this up. Jeff's going to give an honest repute, review of what he thinks. Are you going to suck? I'm <laughs> going to make him say it was good. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, guys, this is the first time I've made these, so we're both going to give an honest review. All right, we just finished up the pizza. We're eating. We're working on it. I don't eat pizza that often, so I thought it was pretty good for a low-carb, low-fat pizza, but I'm going to get Jeff's opinion right now. What do we think? Well, it was free. Freeze always, it. Freeze always freeze makes always it taste better. better. Yeah. So, pretty good. Pretty good. For a low carb, low fat pizza. For 45 grams of protein? Yeah, uh, 45 grams. That's a lot, right? That is a lot. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty sure he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it, and it looks pretty good. Um, I don't know. I would eat it again. He, he would eat it, he would eat it again so would I so if you guys are craving pizza can't fit it into your macros and you don't want to cheat look for some of these ingredients at the store and you can make a pretty good pizza that's still gonna fit your macros so I'm gonna uh, close out here I might end the video here if I do thanks for watching please uh, like and comment Jeff really wants you to subscribe too um, if I if I don't then I'll see you later so once again, thanks for watching. Alright guys, really quick, just a quick update. Um, so it's Monday night, getting kind of late. Tomorrow morning I'm flying out to Los Angeles. I'm meeting up with a few guys about a potential startup company. And it's still in the beginning stages. The reason I'm going out there really is to you know, get in front of them face to face, figure out what they're about, um, go through everything that needs to get done, if this is going to happen, and just kind of uh, figure out what the steps are and the cost for everything. So uh, beginning stages, uh, Hopefully, I'm hopeful about it, so we'll see what happens. And like I said, guys, I'm not an entrepreneur because I haven't done anything yet, but I want to be an entrepreneur. So I'm documenting my journey and trying, trying to do that. So hopefully this works out. If not, I'm just going to think of something different. So uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I probably won't take the camera because it's just a one-day trip, nothing exciting. I'm not going to take it into the meeting, obviously. So I'll give you guys an update, though, when, uh, when I get back. So thanks again for watching. If you like the video, please like it and subscribe, and then I will see you in the next one. 
I got, I got, I got, I got loyalty, got royalty inside my DNA. Cocaine quarter piece, got war and peace inside my DNA. I got power, poison, pain, and joy inside my DNA. I got hustle, though, ambition flow inside my DNA.